hey guys welcome to the channel sylvia here in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how to draft a victorian corset with a punji v neckline and yoke so definitely keep on watching to begin with this tutorial these are the measurements you are going to be needing first off we're going to start by drawing a straight line on the horizon to indicate our start point and i'm just going to label that as the shoulder line so now from the shoulder line we are going to mark our shoulder to chest line our shoulder to bust point measurement our shoulder to under bust measurement our shoulder to waist measurement and our shoulder to top length measurement after marking out these points, we want to draw a line across these points to indicate where each line falls. Please pay attention to what I am doing and saying, which is explaining, because I am using a pencil for this drafting. In case I make mistakes, I can easily erase. So that's why I'm using a pencil for drafting. Later on in the tutorial, I'm going to be marking out what we already have traced out with our pencil with a marker so it's more visible. But for now, I know it's kind of faint, but just pay attention and you'll get it. So now this is me just going ahead to label out each line. Like I said before, we have the chest line, the bust point, the under bust line, the waist line, and the top length. You see why I say use a pencil for drafting. I actually measured the top length longer with one inch. So now this is me just reducing it and erasing the first line I drew. So now on the shoulder line, we are going to mark our shoulder measurement divided by 2. And then from that point, I'm going to come down by half of an inch for shoulder slope. And then we are going to be marking our neck width with 3 inches and our neck depth with 3.5 inches for a normal sized round neck that does not choke. The neck depth might vary depending on the person you're making it for and how comfortable it is around their neck. Depending on the person's neck size when you're taking your measurements. So now you want to go ahead and mark your shoulder measurement divided by two onto your chest line and connect it straight down to the shoulder line and then connect your shoulder slope to your neckline and then locate the middle of your armhole line and come in by half an inch on that point and connect your markings from your shoulder line to your chest line with a french curve Now I'm just going to label that as the arm hole. Now starting from your bust point line, you want to measure your bust span measurement, which is your nipple to nipple measurement, divided by two. You want to mark this measurement on each line to the length of the top and connect all points with a straight line. Now 
now on the waistline you want to come out by one inch on both sides and then from the top length you can decide to come up by either one inch or half of an inch or better still you can leave it just the way it is i'm leaving it just the way it is and then i'm going to connect from the waistline to the top length line like this as you see me doing in the video and also connect from the waistline to the bust point still you can also decide to come down by half of an inch but i'm just leaving it to the way it is now you want to locate the middle of your shoulder line and mark that point and connect that straight to your bust line this is your shoulder dart now from your chest line you want to come up by one inch one inch to one and a half inch depending on the coverage you want from your over bust corset but in this video i'm using one inch and then this line will serve as our corset neckline so now on this line which is going across our shoulder that line we want to come out by half inch on both sides and connect that to the bust point now we're going to shade out this dart as it is no longer useful because we're not going to cut that on our fabric we're just going to shade that part out so now we'll go ahead and mark out our plunging v depth so you can go as deep as you want but for this i think i used four inches and I just used the French curve for a much more narrow V and more like a sweetheart curve at the top. Now that I am measuring the depth from the corset neckline, which is the one inch above the chest line that we marked earlier, that is the corset neckline. So from that neckline, I'm taking the depth. So now before we impute our measurements, we are going to outline the neck with a marker so it is more visible. So now on our bust point line, we are going to impute our round bust circumference divided by 4. Our round bust measurement divided by 4 will impute that. And then on the chest line, we are going to impute that same measurement and replace the dart. So we are basically just going to measure the dart on the chest line and replace it. And then on the waistline, we mark your round waist circumference divided by 4 and then replace the dart. Measure the dart and replace it. So now for the top length, you want to measure where your length is. From your shoulder so from your shoulder to your length of your blouse you want to measure the circumference around that area it is not up to your hip length so you cannot use your hip measurements you want to measure around that area and divide what you have there by four and impute it on your top length line and then connect all your side point markings together on the waistline you want to come in by half an inch or one inch for waist snatching or whatever amount you want to use to reduce your waistline now you want to measure around your under bust line and divide that by four and impute it usually it is the same thing as your waistline circumference measurement so you want to measure it might around vary. that area and divide it by four and impute it on your under bust line and then measure what is left and divide that equally onto your that line and then reconnect 
with a French curve to your bust your point line. From your bust point line to your under bust line. And then from that point, you connect straight down to your waist line with a straight ruler. You can see I'm connecting straight from the under bust to the waist line. If you want to go straight down to the top length, you can do that, but I did not do that in this tutorial. So I'm just going to outline everything with a marker for more visibility. So now for our bust dart placement, we are going to come down from our bust point with 1 inch and connect that point straight to our bust point. And then shade that marking. So now this automatically makes the front pattern shorter at the sides to match up with our back length you know our back length is one inch shorter than our front length reasons being that our back is straight and our front is curvy our back is straight and is deep at the waistline So for our side corset curve, we are going to come up by one and a half inch and connect from that point to the middle of our bodice on the top length line. So now you want to go ahead and label your center front and your side front or you can just use numbers the way I use numbers here so we're going to be snatching the waist a little bit more from the front so we're going to be coming in by half of an inch you can only do this if you are going to be applying boning channels to the middle front of your corset if you're Front of, if the front of your corset is not going to be sewn, it's going to be unfold, then you are going to skip out on this process. But for this plunge V neckline, I'd advise you add bone channels to the front of your corset for more support to the neckline. So I made a little mistake here when drafting this pattern, I was not supposed to go straight on the yoke part, I was supposed to come down to the armhole line on the yoke part, but I made the mistake, I'll correct that later in this video. So here you can see me closing up the boss darts on the side and then re straightening the side line adding fresh piece to straighten out the side line after closing the bust that and then just proceeding to cutting out the pattern for the front piece So now placing this pattern with closed up side bust that onto the original length that we used, you can see that it is reduced with 
1 inch so now we're going to be using this other side of our pattern paper to draft out the back part so i'm just going to label the top line as the shoulder line and just cut out a straight line so just make the pattern paper much more easier to work with So now, with our back length being shorter, we cannot use these lines that we marked for our back drafting. So we're just going to mark out fresh lines. So we're going to remark our shoulder line, our shoulder to waistline, our shoulder to top length, and then we can reuse our shoulder to chest line measurement for the back. It's still going to be useful but we are not going to be using our bust point measurement and our under bust measurements since we don't have bust at the back so for the neckline depth at the back we are using one inch So these are new top length for the back and our new waist length. So everything for the back is marked out in black marker to avoid confusion because of the other labels we have inside this pattern paper. So from the chest line you want to go up by one inch. To create the corset neckline just as we did for the front but it is not really necessary for but the back. it will depend on the style the neckline style you want to use for the back of your corset but for mine it's not really necessary so now i'm correcting what i told you guys of earlier i'm curving the neckline to the chest line curve if your corset is going to be sleeveless you want to do it like this if it's going to have a sleeve then you want to connect it to your armhole to your armhole line because this chest line might be a little too high and there will be no ease for you to raise your hand so now after correcting the curve i'm going to tape it back to the yoke and recut recut through the line that it's supposed to be at so this is what your pattern should be looking like so now at just line we are going to go ahead and impute our round bow circumference divided by four and on the waistline we are going to impute our waistline measurements divided by four and then our top length um, circumference area divided by four we are just going to impute that and then we are going to subtract half inch on the waistline for a little bit of tightness not like snatching not necessarily snatching because it has a little effect mind you on the waistline i already replaced the two inch that we are going to be subtracting for the that so i already replaced that and then from the midpoint of that from the center back we are going to be marking our bust fan measurement divided by two from the chest line straight down to the length of the blouse and then on the waistline we're going to be coming out by one inch on both sides which is the two inch that i said i replaced 
and then we're going to be connecting that line to our top length and connecting to our chest line so now we're going to come down from the chest line with one inch and connect that to the chest line curve yes our brain do glitch sometimes so this was me just trying to figure out my chest line and then so that i can come down by one inch from the chest line and then connect to a chest line curve so i just used a french curve to connect that point together so now this is the neckline style for the for the back part of the corset so this is me just liberating the center back and the side back so now we're going to do a waistline deduction a zipper deduction what do they call it i know we don't have a zipper but to give it that shape at the back when we lace it so it's not just straight so it has that cozy shape i don't know how to explain it like the way it's normally be as if you had a zipper the way it would go in at the waistline yes so you want to go in at the waistline with half an inch and then shade that out you can decide to leave your pattern like this but i'm going to go ahead and snatch the waist a little bit more and create more bony channels for the back so i'm going to measure what is left at your waistline and divide that into two and mark the midpoint and then come out by half inch on both sides and then go to your top length and also measure what is left at the side and divide that by two and mark that point now connect from your side markings to your top length marking and connect that to the middle of your side piece neckline and shade out the dots because it will no longer be needed so now we have two side pieces side piece one and side piece two but i just labeled mine one two three which is center back one side piece one which is two and side piece two which is three So then on the side corset curve we are going to come up by one and a half inch and connect that to the midpoint of our top length. And then we just go ahead to cut out the pattern. So now you can decide what style you want for the yoke part of 
your back but for this particular one i came in by one inch on the neckline and then connected from the neckline width on the shoulder line and just connected it down with a straight line and then you can decide what you want to do for the lacing part of your corset if you want to install eyelets or you want to use loops so this is what i use my pattern to create i am very sorry i could not film a tutorial on this guys because of limited time i had to create this dress i was so pained but i have a lot of tutorials planned out for you guys so this was the final look guys please make sure to give this video a like comment down below what future videos you'd like to see subscribe to the channel share this video with people you you know will be interested in learning this tutorial thank you for watching guys see you in the next one bye